Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on sound waves. The topic of this video is the mathematics of open in air columns. And we want to know what are the formulas that one needs to solve a problem involving an open in air column and how does one use those formulas to solve such a problem. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the physics of open and air columns and I've left a link to this video in the description section of this one. In this video, we'll be discussing how to use that physics in order to solve problems involving open and air columns. What you need to know is the standing wave patterns, the relationships between quantities, and the formulas. You also need to have a strategy. Let's begin by discussing the standing wave patterns shown in the second column of this table. We sometimes refer to these as display displacement plots because they show the displacement of an air particle relative to its position within the air column. You'll notice in the patterns that there are displacement antinodes at the open end. If you know the pattern for a given harmonic, say the first harmonic, and you know the length of the air column, you can calculate the wavelength. For instance, in the first harmonic, there's one half of a wave being displayed within the length of the air column. So length equal one half times wavelength doing some algebra, the wavelength would be equal to twice the length. Now once you know the wavelength of the first harmonic, you can find the wavelength of any harmonic. You'll notice as you go down the column that the wavelengths get smaller as you go down. That's because the wavelength of the nth harmonic is always the wavelength of the first harmonic divided by n. For frequency, you take the frequency of the first harmonic and you multiply by n in order to find the frequency of the nth harmonic. These two columns here show examples of how to do those calculations. They were discussed thoroughly in the previous video. You'll notice that these calculations are done for a 60 centimeter length air column. Now to summarize the formulas that you'll use in, the, in this video to solve open in air column pro problems, we have wavelength of the nth harmonic is equal to the wavelength of the first harmonic divided by n. The frequency of the nth harmonic equal the frequency of the first harmonic multiplied by n. And then there's the speed frequency wavelength equation that states speed v is equal to frequency multiplied by wavelength. Be sure to use the frequency and wavelength for the same harmonic. And then finally, the wavelength of the nth harmonic can always be calculated by taking two in dividing by n and multiplying by the length of the air column. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the use of this graphic organizer in approaching open end air column problems. V, F, and lambda are related to one another by the equation V equal F times lambda. If you know any two of these variables, you can calculate the third variable. The frequency of all the harmonics are related to the frequency of the first harmonic by the formula Fn equal n times F1. And finally, the wavelength of the wave is related to the length of the air column. If you know the standing wave pattern, Pattern. You can expect the pattern and you can calculate the length from the wavelength or the wavelength from the length. I'll be demonstrating how to use this graphic organizer as a problem solving strategy in approaching open in air column problems using five examples. In example one, I'm given the frequency of the first harmonic and I want to find the frequency of the second, third, and fourth harmonic. And in example two, I'm given a standing wave pattern for one of the harmonics and its frequency. I want to find the frequency of the first harmonic. In each of these two examples, I'm going to use this part of the graphic organizer, relating the frequency of all the harmonics to the frequency of the first harmonic. So in, z in example one, I begin by writing down what I know. I know the frequency of the first harmonic is 125 hertz. And what I'm looking for is the frequency of the second, third, and fourth harmonic. Since the frequency of the nth harmonic is n times the frequency of the first harmonic, I can find the frequency of the second, third, and fourth harmonic by multiplying by 2, by 3, and by 4. In example 2, I'm given the standing wave pattern for what looks like the third harmonic and I know the frequency of this harmonic is 360 hertz. So I know F3 is 360. Since Fn is equal to n times F1, F1 must be equal to Fn divided by n. So F1 must be equal to the frequency of the third harmonic divided by three. That comes out to be 120 hertz. In example three, I'm given an open end air column and it's resonating as its fourth harmonic and I'm told that the frequency is 488 hertz and the speed of waves within the air column is 345 meters per second. I write down what I know and I write down what I'm looking for, the length of the air column. 
Now I use my problem-solving strategy to try to figure out a way to get from the givens to the unknown. I know the speed and I know the frequency. I can use the relationship v equal f lambda to calculate the wavelength. What I'm looking to finally find is the length of the air column. Once I get the wavelength, I can use the standing wave pattern to find the length. Here's how that strategy is implemented. I begin by calculating the wavelength from the speed and the frequency. It comes out to be about 0.7069 and some change. I'm just going to write down 0.707 meters as the wavelength, but I'm going to use the unrounded number in my next calculation. Now I draw the standing wave pattern for the fourth harmonic with anti-nodes on the two open ends and four nodes in between. Now I can calculate the number of wavelengths within the length of the air column. I start at one of the open ends and I go from the from the positive displacement down to the negative displacement, that's a half of a wave, back up to the positive, that's a second half of the wave, and then it repeats again for a total of four halves of a wave. I write length equal four halves of a wavelength. In that fraction four halves, the two will always be the denominator, and the numerator will always be the harmonic number. So to calculate the length from the wavelength, I take my 0 0.7069 blah 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 on my calculator, and I multiply by 2, and I can round that to 1.41 meters to three significant digits. In example 4, I know that the length of an open in air column is 1.05 meters and the speed of sound within the air is 342 meters per second. I'm looking to calculate the frequency of the first, the second, and the third harmonic. So I begin by writing down what I know and what I'm looking for, and then I use my graphic organizer to plot out a strategy of how to get from the givens to the unknown. The givens are the blue rectangles, the speed, and the length of the air column. I can find the wavelength using the length, and once I get the wavelength, I can use V equal F times lambda to calculate the frequency of the first harmonic in green. Once I know the frequency of the first harmonic, I can find the frequency of all the harmonics using Fn equal N times F1. So now I apply that strategy. I begin by drawing a standing wave pattern for the first harmonic, and I notice that within the length of the air column, there's one half of a wavelength. So I can say that wavelength is equal to 2 times the length. I plug in the 1.05 meters and I calculate a wavelength of 2.10 meters. Now that I know the wavelength and I'm given the speed, I can find the frequency of the first harmonic. I simply say V equal F lambda and rearrange it to F1 equal V divided by wavelength of the first harmonic. I take my V of 342 and I divide it by my wavelength of harmonic number 1 of 2.10 and I get a value for the frequency of the first harmonic. The frequency of all the other harmonics is n times the frequency of the first harmonic, so to find the frequency of the second and the third harmonic, I take my 163 hertz and I multiply by 2 and by 3. In the fifth and final example, I'm given the length of an open in air column and I'm given the frequency of the fifth harmonic. I'm asked to calculate the speed of sound in the air column. As always, I write down what I know and what I'm looking for. I know fifth harmonic, frequency of the fifth harmonic value, and length of air column, and I'm looking for the speed. Then I plot out a strategy using my graphic organizer. I know the length of the air column in blue, and I know the, the frequency of the fifth harmonic. From the standing wave pattern, I can take the length of the air column and calculate the wavelength of the fifth harmonic. And once I do, I can multiply by the frequency to get the speed. Here's how I implement that strategy. I begin by drawing the standing wave pattern for the fifth harmonic. And I note that there's five halves of a wave within the length of the air column. So I say L equal five halves of a wavelength. Now in that equation, in the L equal equation, the fraction five halves always has as its denominator two and as its numerator the harmonic number. Now I can rearrange that to solve for the wavelength. Wavelength equal length divided by five halves or divided by 2.5 and I get my wavelength value for the fifth harmonic. Now that I have my wavelength of the fifth harmonic, I can use it along with the given fifth harmonic frequency to calculate the speed of waves within the air column. I multiply the F5 value of 36.8 centimeters by the frequency value of 921 hertz. As always in physics, 
give attention to the units. Since this, this wavelength is in centimeters, my calculated speed is in centimeters per second. I can divide by 100 to get the to get the speed in meters per second and it comes out to be 339 meters per second. We've seen five examples, each of a different variety. There are likely other variations from these examples and it's difficult to predict what those variations might involve. But the most likely variation may be in which you have to calculate the speed of sound given the temperature of air. You'd be using an equation like this during your problem solving strategy in which you calculate speed from the temperature in degrees Celsius. What we can predict is that practice does make perfect. And so if you do need more practice, you'll find it on our website. We have a collection of well designed design problems that give you immediate feedback and opportunities to correct your mistakes. There are even links to helpful information in audio files that describe how to approach the problem. It's called the calculator pad and I've left a link to those problems in the description section of this video. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of the video. You have the calculator pad that I was just mentioning, you have a Minds on Physics mission that gives you plenty of practice, and then you have a tutorial page page with worked out problems and solutions. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching.